Hello, I'm Graham. Uh, before I start, uh, music lost a very uh, inspirational, true pioneer this today, uh, yesterday, a uh, visionary, and he did so much for so many people in the industry. Uh, he was always a pleasure to meet, and he created opportunities for everybody, in the, a lot of people in this industry. Um, I thought I'd just start with a quick note to the, to the passing of Jamal Edwards. Um, rest in peace, mate. Okay, let's start with the audience. Right, who is a music producer? Okay, cool. Who is a DJ? S who are we, have we got any singers? Yeah, where's our singers? Yay, hi singers. Amazing. Producers, you need singers, there's still a couple over there. Uh, have we got any promoters? Yay, hi promoters. Have we got any label owners? Nice, sick. Okay. Great. Uh, of those producers, who has released a record? And who is right at the very, very beginning? Who hasn't done anything? Okay, couple, cool. Awesome. Um, from the DJ point of view, who has played out? Awesome. Who, has, who hasn't done it, played it anywhere and just doing it for fun? Just started. Yay, hey. Amazing. Uh, who of those people that are DJing have played live streams, radio shows, podcasts, any of the above? Sick. Cool. Nice mix. Awesome. Okay, cool. That's my little nerve breaker. It's all good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, who am I? I'm Graham Farmer. Oh, there we go. Hello, Mike. Uh, I started in the music industry in 2002. Uh, I worked for a nightclub called Turn Mills 15 years ago, between 2003 and 2008. It was one of the biggest clubs in London, and we had, pretty much had everyone we wanted. Uh, I was lucky enough to work on the, the all-day staff, creating the websites for the club, and we essentially booked who we wanted to book, which just meant you didn't go anywhere else in London because we had a free bar and you could see who you wanted to. It was, a, it, was, it, was a, it was a great time of my life. When the club closed, we launched a website called Data Transmission, uh, which is now run for 14 years. Data Transmission is an online music magazine. Uh, it's also a radio station, a record label, a blog, a SoundCloud channel, a YouTube channel, a Spotify playlist, you name it, it's there. Uh, the prime focus of data transmission is always music, clubs, festivals, with the name of breaking artists and kind of introducing the world to artists. And we've introduced some amazing artists over the years. Uh, we were the first to talk about a band called Disclosure, and we were the first to talk about uh, some, some guys called Salado. Um, we were also the first to put on an event with Totally Enormous Extinct Dinosaur, which was incredible. Uh, had, had one of his first live shows in London because we were on the ball. Uh, we also worked with, uh, put, uh, put on events with Taylor Vass before they on their second of a release uh, and put on Kink live in London in 2010. We find artists early and we're really proud that we found artists early because we dig hard and the team dig hard to find artists early. Uh, in 2015, I started working with an artist called Ben Sterling and another one called Archie B, who's here. Hey Archie, where are you? There he is, out at the back. Um, and I started just helping them along their journey. They um, just kind of, I didn't really know what I knew about artists and kind of how to help artists. I just, they would ask me and I was like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, I kind of go along with the, let's just suck it and see and see what happens. And it kind of works out for us. Sometimes it doesn't, but yeah. Um, so what I learned from them in 2018, I started a YouTube channel for myself and just started putting out content because I found that it was helpful for a lot of people. And I'd get asked, I'd asked at a lot of festivals, how do you do this? Or what should I be doing this? Or I've got a release coming out on this label. How should I promote it? So I started putting that on YouTube um, and covering things like Spotify and SoundCloud and from a DJ point of view because there was not many other people talking about that. It all seemed to be about artists and bands and hip hop artists. So let's do it from a DJ point of view. In 2019, I started coaching artists uh, after a year of just putting stuff on Instagram and I announced that I was going to coach artists and 250 people signed up off of one post and I was like, okay, this is cool. Uh, also, shit, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, over the last three years, I've, I've, I've coached 300 artists in the electronic space. In 2020, I, I built my online course, The Artist Blueprint, 
and I helped Mason uh, with his album social media campaign for Tour Room Records, which is incredible. Uh, his album is amazing if you haven't listened to it, and it did ma you know millions of streams, which is which is mad. Um, in 2021, because of my YouTube channel, uh, and also because I met a guy at a party in 2013 in Miami, uh, who then became head of music for Twitch, I got invited to be a Twitch partner. And for those that don't know what, what Twitch is, a live streaming platform, and partners the highest level, and you normally have to kind of build up to it with like 75 people watching you, but they just invited me um, to go on straight from the start with zero following, which has been amazing. Uh, because I'm a partner, they can put me on the front page of the whole of the site, and last week I had 6,000 people watching me, which was all right. <laughs> and it was less nervous than it was like with you lot, which is mad. <laughs> in, a, in, in, in eight months we hit a million views, which was, which was cool. And it's still growing, I've got some mad interviews. Uh, every Wednesday we have interviews, every Monday we do things like learning. Um, today we practice this presentation, which was, so if you were there on Twitch earlier, sorry you're seeing it again. Thank you for coming earlier. Thanks for being there with the test run. Uh, I also run D social media for a couple of DJs, uh, and in 2022, Data Transmission launched its own label because we were tired of sending music out and just seeing it not do well with other labels, so we're taking control of our own things and our own artists that we like, which is fun. Um, I thought I'd just, before we get started, just see if Archie wanted to come up and say hello. I kind of, before I start. Hello. Hey. Hello. How are you? I'm good, you? This is fun, isn't it? How you doing, guys? You all right? Do you, uh, do you want to tell him how we started? So, I started producing in 2014. And I've been producing about six months. Didn't really know too much about it. Was watching YouTube tutorials, and uh, yeah, just just started to get into producing. And I think it was about eight or nine months. I built up about ten or twelve tracks, and I started to look at labels that I wanted to, to sign them to. And CR2 Records was one of them. And um, I, I built up the courage to send. You know, I've got like ten tracks in SoundCloud playlist. Didn't really know about how to send or you know, what to send, but I got 10 of my best tracks, well, 10 of my only tracks in a SoundCloud playlist and sent them to CR2 Records. Hour later, the main guy who runs CR2 Records emailed me back saying, mate, I love these tracks. My heart just went boom. One of the top labels at the time, CR2 Records, they've like signed tracks from like Tiesto, Noah Rogers, uh, Calvin Harris, Avicii, and they wanted me to go to the office because they like my music and I'm like, whoa. I've only been producing like, what, eight months, nine months. So I've gone to the CR2 Records offices and they've pulled a couple of tunes up and we like this, we like that. And I finally got a release with them. And I think the first release I'd done with them, you premiered it for me, is that right? Yeah, I think so. And oh, that's that how I got to meet Graham. Yeah. Yeah. That was loud, wasn't it? Fuck. <laughs> so... My first release was premiered by Graham, and that's how we got to meet each other, right? This yes, was going back that's to right. 2014. Um, so yeah, I've been producing not very long, signed to one of the biggest labels in the world, and I've got to meet Graham, which <laughs> is the bonus of all of this. <laughs> well done. But yeah, <laughs> and I got to meet Shelley as well, the beautiful <laughs> Shelley, Graham's wife. Um, but yeah, ever since I ever, <laughs> yeah, wifey. Thanks. Where's the ring? Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's our long, long, um, long story short. That's how I got to meet Graham, <laughs> and I think you give me a mix of the day, which was one of the top mixes at the time, wasn't it? Everyone wanted, everyone wanted a mix of the day, which was your. That was mad, wasn't it? Well, back then, was it was yeah. mix of the day. Everyone wanted them, and I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." So obviously, I had a release on CR2, and I got a mix of the day. And I think that's when we really started our relationship, wasn't it? Um, back when I signed for CR2 and I had the mix of the day. And then I think it come to the Valentine's Day the next year. And I made a track called Love Will Save the Day, which is like a Whitney Houston revamp, which I love to make. I love to sort of um, remix all the old classics and put my twist on it. And I think Graham premiered it as like a... F 
was it like a Valentine's Day free download? Wasn't oh, it? yeah, I remember that. You remember that one? Yeah, that did all right, didn't it? And you'd done the artwork for me and all, all stuff like that, and you pressed it out. And yeah, we just, and that was it really, wasn't it? You was kind of mentoring me from back then, I'd say. Yeah. I and mean, you've just been, we've been tight ever since. Yeah, now um, you send me stuff, we work out where we're going to send it. We're signing some records. Yeah. Helping with playlists. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, and obviously, 10 tracks I'd sent in the playlist now become down to like four, which I know a little bit more about. But yeah, never send 10 tracks to a label, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for me, and I got signed to the major, but never, never send 10 tracks. I think the only time that ever works is if you actually are super, super tight with, with the person you're sending it to. And that only comes from network. Oh, hello. Tell yeah, had, had a brilliant year last year. Released on uh, Salatoko, Sonny Federa's label. Released on Tool Room. Released on Marleybone. Where else did I release? Who Plays. That's big. Um, Give him a little clap. That's big. Yeah, all, all gold labels. <laughs> Hang on. Well, let's hold. Let's give him a little clap. Yeah, thank you. So obviously, Tool Room was a gold label. Salatoko was a gold label. And the releasing with Marleybone has been amazing as well because, as you can see, it's just a, it's a special place when you come in here. And I don't know what, uh, about you guys, but when you go into the studio section of the place as well, it's just it's just another level. And it's just the guys are so great. Everyone that works here, Dave, Scott, all the staff, they just they just look after you. So whenever you come up here, you just feel like part of the family, and it's just it's just a great place to be and work. So. If anyone does want to sign tunes to the labels, it, I'd highly advise it because they're just great people to work with. Everything's done proper. So, but yeah. Thank Graham thank you. has been an absolute godsend since I met him. He's been such a good mentor to me. I, I do a lot of stuff on my own now because he's taught me how to do it. But anything that I need, he's always there for me. He's, you know, he'll support anything that I need supporting on. But yeah, it just, it's just... I think I literally was, learned what I know because I li was, was working out with you. Yeah. So you've kind of, if, if you needed to know anything, you kind of used me as your demo tool, <laughs> know, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> we're like, let's try it's, this. It's work, it's work. It's work. We've done all right, though, haven't we? So it's all good. It was like, let's try this. It might work. Okay. But yeah, like, um, you've helped me loads. And yeah, you've, you've been great, mate, over the years. So thank you. Cheers, Beach. Dude. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming up. Wicked. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I think we should also give a second round of applause for his trainers. Look at those bad boys. <laughs> I think they nearly stole the show. They were like walking, I mean, crying out loud, dude. <laughs> right. <laughs> Creep it together. Right. Uh, uh, what are we going to cover tonight? We're going to cover, I want to cover three areas. Networking, music, and social media. And kind of break those down into little three little sections between each one. Uh, if you've got questions, we have a runner with a mic. Uh, somewhere, but we'll kind of keep. I'm going to do a Q and A at the end as well. Hey, oh, is it? It's all right. It's in. I wanted it was then. It was like sneaking in. So let's get going. Uh, one thing I'm going to start. One thing I always say to artists is, when you're sending music out there, try and reduce the friction as much as humanly possible. And what I mean by this is, when you're trying to achieve something from somebody. Make it as easy as it is possible for them, to, for, them to, for them to deliver it for you. Reduce the friction. So that means that like, if you're trying to send, a, send tracks to someone to listen, put them in a playlist. Don't just send them three links. Because that three clicks is just, first, it's annoying. Secondly, it's their, think, like, think about their time. If you open that email and they go, oh, look, it's fucking 10 links. N no. That's your, that's your chance gone. So reduce that friction. Um, if you're sending an email and you want something, Ask for it. Don't just kind of go, hi, I want to do something. Just be on it, be straight to it and go, I want to do something and I want to do this and I want to do this and I think you're the right platform to do it on or you're the right label to do it on. Here's the link. Can we do it? It reduces that friction. They can either go yes or no straight away. That kind of four or five emails back and forth where you're trying to work out what they're trying to, what they're trying to say, again, it's annoying. The other thing I'm going to say a lot is do the research. Understand where you're trying to get to. Understand what, who, who you're trying to get with. Listen to previous releases. Listen to previous shows. Understand terms and names and really do the research. Understand playlists. Understand who owns them. Understand record labels and wh what they're releasing. Uh, don't just send, kind of go into a blind panic. I've seen so many producers do it all the time. Blind panic mode. Right, I've made a track. Shit, let's get it out there. I want to send it to everybody. 
uh, and it kind of just gets annoying. Like I, the amount of times I get sent an email that says, um, "Here's a track for your label." It's it's just in case you're feeling. Uh, um, what's the word I was thinking about earlier? It's just in case you're thinking you're think you've got a mellow mellow part of the label. I never have a mellow part of the label. We have fucking party, and that's it. <laughs> mellow is not in our, in our in our remit. And if you'd done the research, you'd know mellow is not part of our remit. But there's loads of mellow labels that really love that sort of music. So go and find them and send it to them. Because they'll love it, but not for me. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is networking. And it's the most important thing. Before music, before partying, before signing music, before strategy, before social media, is networking. And building your network is the most important thing in, in the entire industry. The industry is actually quite tiny. You think it's massive, but it's not. At the core of the industry, there's, it's a few people running, a, pulling a few strings. And the closer you get to the middle, you'll know this. There's a few people doing everything, and you'll find this out. So the, so the more you network and the more you build that network, from promoters to label owners to party owners to even things like playlist owners and SoundCloud channels and YouTube channels, build that network. The more you can build that network, the more important it is. And the more you'll build yourself as a producer and a DJ, uh, and the more your options you'll get. Or it could be things like social networks, you know? These things are important. As much as you don't like, like them, think they are, they, they really are important these days. And it also could be your things like your email database. Um, to find you to get to work, build the right network, I always think you should set yourself some goals of where you're trying to get to. Because then you'll build a network around what you're trying to achieve. Instead of, again, blind panic mode, shit, I'm going to get something signed. Let's, let's send it everywhere. Focus yourself. Set a vision of where you want to be and go, right, how do I get there? Where do I want to be in five years' time? What label do I want to be on five years' time? I was saying this to Shelley earlier about... Uh, about drum code. Who gets signed to drum code? Only really, really good techno music. That's only from people that have been releasing for years. That's probably only friends with Adam Bayer. Right, so that means you need to get friends with Adam Bayer and his team. So that, that, that's your goal. The first thing is to make friends with the people that make the release the music. The second thing is, right, I need to release a load of tracks to get me that point and make the music good enough for that point. So build your network first. Go to every drum code party. Definitely, definitely don't walk past any security guards to get into backstage areas. I definitely don't recommend that at all. And I've definitely never done that. <laughs> I've definitely also never worn the same wristband twice <laughs> and waved it at someone that I shouldn't have done to get into a backstage area because I knew that there was a manager in there that I wanted to speak to. So I, please don't do it. Um, so yeah, what your target goals should be working on, work out what your target goals want to be. Are they labels? Are they parties? Are they promoters? Set them out and then, and then you can kind of work out where you're going to get to. And this can be including things like putting your, making sure your face shows up in their social media comments every time. Set them as, set, set, set their social media as to tell you when they're posting so you can literally be the first post and let your face be appearing every time. Literally work every event, every angle. This thing called touch points, and you try and touch people on as many platforms as possible. So find them on LinkedIn, find them on Instagram, find them on, you know, in an email, find them, find them at a party, shake their hand. I have literally been out clubbing before just to shake hands and meet people, and that's all I've done, and then gone home. And sometimes I've gone out to go and get wrecked and stand by the speaker and curl up in a corner and touch myself, I genuinely, but <laughs> that's a whole different thing. <laughs> but, you know, play it by ear, you know? Obviously, we're at a record label. How many people have spoke to someone from this label tonight? Actually shaking a hand while they've been here. Okay, cool. So all the rest of you, go and find them. Shake their hands. Say hello. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm so-and-so. What do you do? Always works. Go to conferences. They're great fun. Go to things like this. Go and meet anybody here. I met somebody earlier, and they'd not, they would reach you at the start. Go and speak to everyone in this room and say, hi, how you doing? I'm so-and-so. Because you don't know that this dude here, he might be a, somebody in, bigger in 10 years' time, and he might have access to something extra. And he'll go, oh, yeah, I met you at that Marleybone event. Great. I'm going to put you on this massive platform with a load of followers, and I'm going to help you out because we, we shook hands 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Go and speak to everybody all the time. 
Um, so, uh, from an artist's point of view, I always think of goals should be things like, what are your key labels for this year? Where are you trying to get to? Labels are good because they have fan bases. So always work on labels as a good place to release. But don't let that stop you from not releasing. Like, if you can't get on labels, self-releasing is massive now, and it's very, very easy. And if you, as a small artist, you're probably going to do a lot of the content yourself. You're going to spend a lot of the marketing budget yourself to make sure your record gets where it should be. So you can self-release quite easily, and it's not difficult. And it keeps you consistent re releasing. Um, other things you consider, which, which radio shows do you want your music card on? Radio is still huge. Who are the presenters pre pl playing your music? Again, make that network across multiple pl channels and get their music, get your music to them. Wednesdays and Thursday mornings is a great time to send music to radio stations. They're always choosing their music. Work out who your champion is. I was told this by somebody at a massive label. They said, they were, I was trying to send record, records to every show and they were just like, just focus on one. Who's your champion? Who's going to play your music every time? And just hit them every time with your music and hit them multiple times. And make them the person that's got your music exclusively. And tell them it's you that got them exclusively. Hey, I've got you, this is my new track. It's on Marleybone. It's coming out on, and do it for the release day. It's coming out on Friday. I'm giving it you first. Makes them feel special. They might play it, they might not. I'll take the shots. Um, other things to consider, like, I know probably not everyone here, but I know DJ Mag Top 100s is still a big thing. If, you, if that's your goal, own it, man, and make it possible. You need, what do you need to get to the top of that? A big team, a load of money, popular records. Right, that's the goals. Go make it happen. Focus. Beat port number ones, if that's your goal. Again, what do you need to be there? Right, I need to be on the right labels. I need to go on network with the right labels to get me to the right places. I need, I need to be in all the Facebook groups that, that do swaps with, that help me buy and sell tracks. These are the goals, set the goals and you know what you're actually trying to get to. And then work them out, right? Literally five years, three years, one year. How far in advance you can go, where do you want to be? I, the amount of times I speak to artists now and, and I'm like, what do you want to do in a year's time? Well, I want to play some festivals. All right, how are you going to get there? Well, uh, I'm going to send it to the, uh, I don't know. Right, okay, work it out. Work out how you're going to get there. You're going to need to play a load of shows. You're going to need a load of content to show that you're pr providing, you know, entertaining a crowd. You're going to need the social, good social media content, and you're going to need, you know, someone making sure that they're not fucked behind you to film it. Plus, you're going to need to network with all the right people again, and probably be on the, probably, let's face it, be on the right labels because the labels are booking the, the, the smaller rooms and the, the side rooms. Um, okay, so if you, then let's talk about labels. You want to sign a track to a label, and let's face it, most of them are going to sign you probably on a compilation to start with. This, I know this is, some, uh, this is then going to help you, because they're, uh, they're going to watch that track to see how it does. They're going to say, right, we'll put you on a compilation, and then if you, if you really smash the shit out of it, then, they'll, then it looks good for you, and you've worked it hard. So you need to, then, then they might take you on for a single and an EP and a track and, you know, and can't carry on working. You become one of their regulars, you become one of their party people, one of their, one of their DJs, and it builds and builds. But you've got to really take every opportunity that you can and just maximize it. I always think, like, how far can I take a record? How, what's, what, where can I, how can I make it go as far as I possibly can? What piece of content, what more content can I make? What more, how can I get more streams on it? How can I get more downloads on it? And when you're, when you're literally to the end of your point, you go, right, is there any other platform I can put it on or anywhere else I can network with that I can get it into more people? And that's why when you're trying to release music, you're trying to think, right, if you're releasing every two weeks, you haven't got time to do that. So you have to space your releases out. I thought I'd just have a quick little side note about etiquette when you're going out networking. I know this sounds pretty obvious, but there are some new people, so I thought we'd just touch on it briefly. If you get backstage, don't be too fucked. No one likes a dribbler. <laughs> don't be a dick. Don't do anything illegal. Or don't get caught doing anything illegal. Maybe that's a better one. Don't drink the headliners' riders and all their drinks. Never goes down well. Um, definitely try and get yourself a band for the area you're supposed to be in if you've managed to walk past the security guard that you weren't supposed to walk past and definitely didn't wave your arm in the air to get past there. Definitely go and try and get one of those. 
Uh, and just so, like I said, just be able to chat to everyone. Um, the other thing is, if you see headliners backstage, and you're in a town in the middle of nowhere, and they're playing, and, and they're literally on their own, go and say hello. They're literally probably, you know, just bored. And it could be a great time to network. I was literally at an event in Dunstable, and Jack Master was there, and he was literally there on his own. And this guy come back in, he definitely, definitely, he definitely walked past the security guard and definitely kind of blagged his way in there. And he kind of went up to him and was like, mm -hmm. and we're like, dude, this is your time to talk to him properly. Like he's literally on his own and he's bored. <laughs> like, pull it together. And you could tell he like really wanted to talk to him, and he was just absolutely messy, and he just couldn't hold it together and say one simple sentence to him. And it was like you wasted your opportunity because he was sitting there bored. And go and talk to him about whatever. What, make that conversation because it is lonely on the road, as much, some of you will know. And if someone comes up to you and goes, "Hey, I'm so and so," you're going to talk to him, and then you're your new best friend for that night, and you give him your music. So a brief on networking. Right, let's talk about music. This will be fun. Um, when you're making music, I always think there's two things. You, firstly, make it for fun. But secondly, you don't have to release everything you make. If you make something and you and, and it get, I always think if you make something and it goes massive tomorrow. And so it gets on, it gets on somewhere, and someone plays it, and then you have to, it gets massive in an instant. You're going to have to DJ that music for the next two to three years. So if you don't like it, or it's a track that you just threw out there because you thought it'd be fun, but it's not the sound you want to play, you're fucked. <laughs> it's going to cause you all sorts of mental health problems, which you don't really want. So let's repeat this together. You don't have to release everything you make. Just make it for fun. If you make that drum and bass track and you're a house producer, brilliant. Well done. It's going to probably help you make other music. You're definitely going to learn something. But just keep it for yourself. Play it on a live stream when you do a drum and bass set in 10 years' time and go, yeah, I've made this ages ago. It's amazing. But you don't have to release everything you make. Um, if you're going to spend your hard-earned cash promoting this music because you're on a small label, again, you've got to love it. So, and it's got to fit with the goal, your, your goals and your, where you're trying to get to. Which, again, you need to set those out in the start so that you know where you're trying to get to. If you're making tracks and you're not playing in your DJ sets, then don't release them. If you're not playing your own tracks, then how do you expect others to? If they don't fit within your music, then, again... If you can't make content from them, then they're not going to grow, unfortunately. So don't release them. Just sit on them. You never know. Things might change. It might, it might, you never know. Uh, if you don't have gigs, then there are plenty of opportunities to play and DJ every week. It's called the internet. There's loads of opportunities. Radio shows, live streams. Just make video mixes. Stand in front of the video and make them and put them on YouTube. But if you want to be a DJ, and that's your, literally your passion, and you want to DJ every week, then you've got to put content out there that shows you're a DJ, because otherwise no one's going to find you, and no one's going to know that you're a DJ, because you're not playing anywhere, and you're in this endless circle of going, I'm not playing anywhere, and I can't get any gigs, so how do I get there? Put content up there, make sure, make sure you look like a Show you're a DJ in front of everybody. Um, there is two, um, um, two amazing uh, female artists. One's called Amy L, and she literally through lockdown, put up videos every day on TikTok and Instagram of her DJing. And now she's playing for Elro and massive events. She had two releases last year, which were good and a great label, but it all came from building an audience from DJing and showing that you're DJing every day and putting the effort in and putting the content out. So show you're a DJ. Um, let's talk about sending demos. Again, who are your targets? When you're trying to send demos, again, spend the time working out which labels are right for you. L actually listen to the music that they're putting out. Are they putting out a track that's got, that's got a big drop and a vocal, and they're releasing, they've released 10 in a row? Well, that's what they're releasing. So if you send them this new melodic techno banger, they ain't signing it. 
They just don't, they're not, that's not what they're releasing. Make a list of 20 to 30 labels and literally split them up. Small, medium, large. And you can work out how big they are because you can see which artists are releasing them. And you can see how many tracks are, the streaming, the tracks are streaming. And you can see how many, where they're getting in the Beatport places. And you can see what following they've got and their artists have got following on them. Again, do the research and write that down. I hate them, but I, I love and I hate spreadsheets, but they're great. And it is, it doesn't feel very kind of, DJE, when you're talking about spreadsheets and releases, but fuck me, it really helps. Re like literally look at what the label's looking for, research what their previous releases are, and then use the leverage you, you, you've built over uh, previous releases, or, you've, or, you, or a mix you've done for somebody, or a, you know, use that leverage. Always try and leverage up the next thing. And that's how I feel like labels work. It's like you start in the smallest one, and you leverage that to get to the next one, and you leverage that to get to the next one. And maybe you leverage that to get a, a mix on a blog or a radio show. And maybe you get lucky and, you know, Sarah's story plays on a Friday and you leverage that to get something else. And then you leverage all of it to get some gigs. Or get it to the next biggest artist to play your records and then that gets you gigs. Uh. Try and release every 60 days. Try and release, uh, and this could be, like I said, it could be a label release. It could be a self-release. It could be a free download. Some, remember, audiences don't know sometimes if you're saying, here's my new release, and it's only a free download, most people aren't going to know that. If you say I'm at number one in the hype tip chart, I bet half your audience will go, fucking hell, well done, mate. That's amazing. They don't know what number one in the hype tip chart is. They don't give a monkeys. They just see a number one. But it's a load of social audience and a load of social growth, which is perfect, which is what you want at the end of the day. And that's why you're going to continue that consistency. It's also going to probably build you a load of followers which is then going to help the next release, and you can leverage that to help the next release. Um, definitely just keep the momentum going. Space releases out. Every two weeks isn't actually going to help you. I know some people do it, and it's just, it's just stupid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the main reason is because Spotify will only let you have one track in their release radar every 28 days. I don't know people I'm a know about Spotify, but... We'll talk about that in a minute, but one track, basically their release radar is free promotion from the platform. The more followers you have, the more release radars you hit. So if you've got 1,000 followers, that's 1,000 free promotions of that track. If you're releasing two, two a month, then you're only getting one of those in there, which is then cutting, your, cutting the reach. So you at least need to be releasing every 28 days. Keep it to more than 28 days apart. Um, as I say, you, as we probably know, Spotify is one of the biggest streaming platforms. 34% of all music is now streamed on Spotify. 70% of bigger, la bigger labels' revenue comes from, spot from streaming. Streaming audiences are much bigger than downloads. And the general punter, the general listener, is now probably, probably going to listen to your music by streaming it on either YouTube or SoundCloud or Spotify or TikTok. This is why the bigger labels target spend most of their time promoting streams. Beatport number ones are great, aren't they? They're cool. But streams is audience and fan base. And you can actually see fan base as well. When you look at the artist's back end for Spotify, you can see where your fans are, where they're listening, who's listening, when they're listening. And you can't see that from Beatport. Playlists, playlists are so key, and they become part of your weekly content. And as most of you probably need content, it's really easy to update your playlist and shout about it every week, once a week. Um, as we all know, streaming revenue is tiny for artists when you've got no fans. This is true. And all the bigger artists definitely earn more out of it. This is true. But you're definitely a smaller artist playing a different game. Streaming platforms with their playlists offer the best discoverability for an artist. That means getting your music heard and, sa and found is much, much easier on a streaming platform. By building your own playlist and controlling your own narrative, you can actually build your own fan base, um, which then makes it far easier for your music to be heard, it's far easier for the, uh, the AI to pick up your music, the, uh, the artificial intelligence playlists, which then pushes it to more people. It's much easier, and it's about a longer game. Um, so it's really important to think about Spotify as, a, as a, one of your priorities. I always think that every release of music it's like, a, it's, like a, it's, like a, it's like a punch in a boxing match. If you're trying to push forward, 
and you're trying to, if you're in a boxing match, you don't just knock out somebody. Well, you maybe do, but once in a while, that's a blue moon happening. But you, you want to kind of just keep those punches coming and keep them coming all the time. And it's like, it's your tr it's, I always think it's your chance to improve your skills. It's your chance to improve your, your audience. You're going to level up with each release. And that's why keeping them consistent and not worrying whether it's a label release or a self-release or a free download, but just building a schedule for yourself and controlling your schedule yourself. And then, like I said, maximizing every single thing out of it. But let's talk about talk, pitching to labels before we go into self-releasing. The first part of the pitch, which most people miss, is the subject line of the email. This is your first shot at someone's attention. So pack it. Pack it with as much leverage as you've got from previous releases. If you've had a release on Tool Room, in that title needs to work, go the road Tool Room. If you've had a release on Solar, the road, that needs to go in there, or RAM, or drum, whatever. Subject is the, is the first thing that's going to catch people's attention. So use it and fill it. And keep it short. And people remember, there's only a certain amount of characters that are going to come up on people with someone's phone. So make sure you organize it in, the, in a certain way that come, puts, the, puts the leverage at the front. Keep your email short and to the point. What have you previously done? Who, who are you? Firstly, who are you? What have you previously done? Who have you had releases with? Have you had coverage on Radio 1? Have you had, have, have you had a Beatport 1, number 1? All these things are going to, again, leverage in someone's eyes. Um, and then, again, like I said, playlist of two or three tracks. Don't overpack it. If someone wants to hear more music from you, they'll ask for it. If you've built a relationship with an A&R and you've hung out with them, and, and then you can then go for it. Send, along, send more. Because you know that person. You've what's, you're on a WhatsApp chat with them. If it's a cold email, keep it short and to the point. Send that email and then, and then, and then wait. If you haven't heard it, if, they, if you get an autoresponder that says, wait two weeks, wait two weeks. If you don't, give them a little nudge. There's a lot of music out there right now. There's a lot of producers made a lot of music in lockdown and they're all trying to get it signed. And it's hectic. And inboxes are hectic. So give it a little nudge. Be polite. Oh, did you get to check this? If you send it on a Monday, try pushing it again on a Wednesday. Maybe they check emails on differently. If you send it in the morning, try it in the evening. Try different times of the day. Stalk them a little bit on, so on stories. If they're traveling, they're not going to be checking, dem they're not checking a and R's. Or demos. Ooh. I don't know how that word was. That Sometimes they come out weird. Um, and then, yeah, just nudge them. And if it doesn't happen, then you move down the list to the next label. And just, but be diligent. Send a few out. If you've got 10 tracks, three to one, three to another, three to another, and then keep moving them around. And if they're not signing them, but you believe in them, then self-release them. Build your following, build your audience. Build Spotify numbers. Spotify likes it when you when you are a good user of Spotify, which means you have good bios and good pictures and, and you're releasing regularly and you're pitching to the Spotify editorial and you're pushing your stream numbers and you're pushing your follow numbers up. And the more you do this, the more the editorial can see it in the back to you, the, the back of their systems. And when it comes to that big pitch for that big that big label that you've got four months down the line, they'll see that you've been active and that you've been regular and you've been essentially doing what they want to do. And their business model is to get people listening to music on Spotify and build followers on Spotify. That's their business model. So the more you help them do that, the more it looks good for you and the more they're going to help you. I hate using words of business and thingy, but it is true. Then while, while you're waiting to get these signs, start thinking about content. A release needs at least eight to 10 pieces of content, minimum. And if you think that's every couple of days, that's 20 days of coverage for your release. Start thinking about out of the box. How can you promote this? How can you say the same thing 20 times with 20 different pieces of content, but essentially say the same thing? If you're at the start and you're releasing on a small label, definitely this is up to you. The small label is probably some guy down the road or his missus helping him do the, whatever. They're going to need your help to make content. Don't rely on labels to do anything. It, like even big labels like this place, which is amazing, isn't it? If you made your own content, it's going to help you. You can lead the content all the time, and that allows you to think to how to push it to the furthest. Um, once you've signed your track, hurrah, have a little party. 
Celebrate your wins. Celebrate them all the time, big or small. Um, again, try and space them out. And tell labels you've got releases in, in certain months. Don't just kind of go, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. this. Have a plan. Like, tell them you've got one in March. Can we have it in April? Good labels will go, yes, definitely. We'll, we'll, we'll move it around. If it's on a VA, then you're a bit fucked, but I, you have to kind of roll with it. But there's no reason why you can't promote it two weeks after, three weeks after, and again, work your own narrative. 